It's a drag. Yeah. All my friends pulled up for good vibes. We know that the good vibes could mean go to some. We ain't trying to live forever. Just live it. You know, uh, I feel like Houston is like. One in Texas is just different. They just breach your love, Texas, just like nonstop. And I think I'm, you know, I'm that through and through. Like, I love Texas. Uh, Houston's just like home, man. When I think of, of, like, my family and I think of, like, my upbringing and stuff like that. That was just all I knew, man. It was good. It was good to me. Houston, you know what I'm saying? We got the best food, in my opinion, in Houston. So, it's, you know, Southern living, man. Southern hospitality. Everybody nice. Everybody cordial. Yeah, I've been singing since I was little. Uh, I'm a I'm a church baby, so my my family used to have me like in church, like singing, you know, as a little kid in like funny color suits and stuff like that. So it's kind of always been in me. My mama don't really sing, so I always wonder like where I got my voice and my archy side from. Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, I've been singing since I was little. Yeah, that was. That was like in college. I started writing my own stuff more kind of in middle school, high school. I started kind of figuring out like, oh, I want to do this. And then by the time I got to college, I was like, it got to a point where I started writing my own music and I just released it. I mean, like I was just putting it out there. And you know, back then I thought it was the hottest stuff ever, but you know what I'm saying? Like I listen back and I'm like, nah, this is trash. But I dropped it and people loved it. I remember the first single I dropped kind of during the SoundCloud era. Like, like a lot of my college friends just kind of went crazy over it. And I think that just really is what gave me the kind of momentum to say, oh, I want to keep going, I can do this, so. Yeah, I don't know, because I feel like I was a little right after the SoundCloud era. Like, I was putting my stuff on there because that was just a place, but I was a few years after all the SoundCloud artists that kind of popped. Like, I feel like, I feel like people like Chance and LA and Xavier Omar, like people who I kind of, you know, have, have seen kind of blow up on SoundCloud. Like, I remember when Soul Lection was a big thing. Like, I was just, I was kind of after that way. So, so, I really don't know. If it came back, I would use it, you know, so I still put myself on there. And uh, every now and then I look back and I'm like, oh, people listening on here. So, I think it's just another platform. Honestly, I was writing, I was writing poems when I was in middle school. And I remember just, like, always being interested in, like, rhyming. In Houston, like, people freestyle. And I just thought that was the thing people did everywhere. I guess people do freestyle everywhere. But, you know, we got that. I didn't came down. Man, hold look Like, you actually might not. I, I said that I hit to a few people and they know what I was talking about. I didn't came down. Yeah, you know I'm stunning. I'm all about my money. My nose running. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I think I was just always kind of infatuated with music and sounds and producing and stuff like that. So, um, I think... My writing has just got stronger just because I'm I'm doing it more often, you know. Like I wish I had like you know a book or something I could refer people to, but really it's just like now nah, I'm just I'm just writing a lot. I'm letting people analyze my lyrics. I just kind of write and release, you know what I'm saying? Like what people like, they like. You know, what people don't, they don't. Yeah, so I had seen a few of my friends. So I'm from Houston. So you know who Toby in the wig way is? He's a, he's a rapper out of Houston. And he like, he started kind of dropping short songs. But he, it was more like freestyle. And at that time I was like, man, I don't want to do covers. Like, like what's me? And I was like, man, I know I write dope music. Um, but I also don't want to, you know, spend like a year on an album and then, you know, like, it don't really go nowhere. So I was like, how do I stay in front of people? And this was kind of right before TikTok was really a thing and people were really tapping into it. And so, you know, I was like, well, you know, I got these ideas. Let me just drop them and, you know, be consistent and see where it pops. And it, it really worked. It even helped me, like, get my albums out because, you know, at the end of the day, I was able to see, like, oh, this is what people want, you know? Uh, I knew some people out here after college. I was like, uh, I was in the Austin scene and I was still trying to do my music stuff, but... Austin's just different. It's a music capital of Texas, but it's not like R&B kind of based. And so um, I had some people out here who was like, you know, come out, we got some opportunities for you. And, uh, you know, at that time I was like, cool. Like, 
you know, I'm ready for something new. So that's what really got got me out here. That was about five years ago. I love Atlanta, bro. Like the city is, is dope, and it, it's not too far off from Texas. Like it still has that Southern hospitality vibe. Like there's just been a lot more opportunity out here for me too. Like to see black excellence and people doing their thing. You know what I mean? Like it's been it's been really good. Here, seeing other people kind of grind and do their thing and kind of being immersed into the scene here, uh, like it's it's southern flavor, but it's different. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta has its own sound, and I think just being in the space, being able to see how things move here, um, it's definitely had an influence on my music and my sound. I think I think earlier on in my career, uh, like I have a lot of different influences, like not just rap and, and R and B, but pop and. Um, and I think it makes me, it makes my sound unique. But I think when I got here, you know, I had, I really got to dive into like Atlanta, like that trap style, like the Southern, like hip hop even here. Cause Houston, we got, we got, we got rap, but it's just different. You know what I'm saying? Like we like everything flow. So it, it, yeah, it's definitely influenced my sound and kind of what I aim to produce and stuff. Yeah, I think I think it's a gift to be able to do both. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to be able to perform at in, in really any kind of space. Uh, let me not say any, because I feel like if you summon everybody, you really ain't doing nothing. But I think pop and R&B circles, uh, like I want to be able to to perform in both those and kind of have equal footing. Because I think I can do. You know what I'm saying? Like some people compare me to like Bryson Tiller, and some people compare me to like. LA and some other people, some people compare me to like Super Duper Kyle, and I think it just kind of shows, depending on what song you're listening to, it kind of can show you a different side of me, and I and I can really tap into all of it, which I really enjoy, because I feel like it's, once you kind of get put in a box, sometimes boxes can be helpful, but a lot of times they just, they aren't that helpful, so I'm just like, yo, it's just me. So I always say my first two, like, CDs that I really dove deep into was, uh, College Dropout, and uh, this is a band called One Republic. Um, they had an album called Dreaming Out Loud. And that, bro, it was just like, it just like blew my mind the way both of those albums kind of, they put their songs together, they formulated their thoughts. And I think that's kind of like, if there was a me, I feel like I can pull from both, you know what I'm saying? That I have a lot of hip hop roots, but also a lot of like, just pop and musical roots and stuff. And I try to blend it in a way that's like, digestible for people uh, and like people just want you know it just creates a lot of replay value because it's like different than just the trap beats but it's also like not so musical that it kind of turns you off but it's like you can see both elements nah that was dope bro i mean after the pandemic like a lot of the shows and stuff shut down so South by Southwest really just put that fuel under me. Like I even hit my manager, hey Isaiah, afterwards. I was like, "Hey, we gotta do some more shows," uh, just because I it just made me hungry. Like being in front of it's it's a difference when you're in front of people who don't know your music. Like there was people in that crowd who knew me for sure, but there was a there was a good amount of people who didn't know me. And to be able to kind of win them over is always like like a joy for me like it just gives you like a deep satisfaction like oh yeah 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 you ain't know who i was before but now you even heard the music you're gonna look it up so i think that's the kind of vibe it, it created and it was a good time man it was a lot of dope artists on the on the roster that i hadn't seen in a while so and it was in texas so you know what i mean yeah we actually made this in la Stop. Let me get you in the moment. Hey, uh, hold up, freeze. Stay right up. Stay right up. Let me get you in focus. My friends went to LA and just recorded a bunch of songs. And then this year we was like, oh, we should probably finish these. Um, but yeah, bro, it's just a fun song. Like, it ain't really nothing too deep. It's just like, yo, like, it can kind of go a bunch of different ways. Like, one, you know, you see a girl. And you're trying to get in focus, you know, you're trying to hype her up, you're trying to tell her she look good. Like, you know, every girl like you to take photos of her, they want you to, want you to, uh, you know what I'm saying, be their cameraman. And it's funny because I also do photography. So like, I think playing off of that, like, you know, just, just, just trying to add a different spin on a, on a way to hype somebody up, but, but make it fun, make it catchy. I think that's really the goal. I really didn't think too much about the song. I mean, my boy wrote it. 
And then we got in the studio, we started pinning lyrics, and it was like, it just kind of came out naturally. And so I think it's a fun vibe. Me and Isaiah think it could really do um, great on like socials and stuff like that. So we're really just trying to, now that it's out, like I'm already getting texts being like, yo, this a bop, it's hard, you know what I'm saying? So now it's just trying to get it, get it circulating in front of people, so.